Yesterday, the IDE of choice among Vibe engineers and the king of VS Code forks, Cursor, released version 2.0, and it contains new features that will terrify all of the AI coding doubters, haters, and non-believers out there. The this video is not sponsored by Cursor, but over the past year, their meteoric rise is impossible not to notice in the programming space. They went from zero to a $9.9 .9 billion company in a matter of months by simply forking Microsoft's VS Code and duct taping ChatGPT. GPT to it, but there's a reason Cursor is so popular. It targets the happy, productive middle ground for programmers who know how to code, but who simultaneously hate writing code. And Cursor 2.0 pushes this idea even further with five new features you need to know about. It is October 30th, 2025, and you're watching The Code Report. Like most people, I use AI coding tools like Cursor as a friendly assistant, asking it to generate some boilerplate code here and do some tab completions there. But recently, I met a 12-year-old kid at a birthday party who's making 50k MRR on his side hustle, and he told me I was doing it wrong. He said, you need to think like a Roman slave driver, whip in hand, heart turned to stone. If you want to get anywhere in life, you need to be running multiple coding agents in parallel, all pushing, reviewing, and fixing code on the master branch simultaneously, not the woke main branch. I asked him how he does it, and he said, quote, a cursor is the digital lash I wield to drive these agents ever forward. I couldn't believe what I was hearing from this kid, but then I realized I just made this entire story up in my head. But cursor has never really been a true AI company. It does have great tab completion AI, but like most startups, it's mostly just a nice UI wrapper on top of foundation models like GPT-5 and Claude. Well, not anymore. They now have a new model called Composer that allegedly approaches the intelligence of the best frontier models while achieving higher speeds, much higher speeds. And that's huge because waiting for slow-ass GPT-5 and Claude to get work done is a huge bottleneck. But I have my doubts about these trust me bro benchmarks. These are internal closed source benchmarks that don't even compare pair Claude, GPT-5, or Gemini directly. And Composer also doesn't show up on any external benchmarks like LM Arena or SWE Bench yet. That's sus AF, and the only thing we can do is try it out ourselves, like I'm doing here in the new Agent View mode and Cursor 2, which is a UI update that cleans things up when you're doing chat-heavy development. But the craziest feature you need to know about is its Git Worktrees integration. A Git Worktree is basically just a local copy of your code that won't conflict with your main Git workspace. But what that enables is working working with multiple agents simultaneously on the same task. Like here, I'm building a design system for a web app. My client wants a button in that ugly neo-brutalism design, so let's go ahead and implement it with Claude GPT-5 and Cursor's new Composer model in parallel. As you can see here, they all get to work, and as promised, the Cursor model is by far the fastest, with Claude in second and GPT-5 lagging way behind. But what matters more than speed is quality. When we compare them side by side, they all have a reasonable level of quality, but I think Claude and GPT-5 are still a bit better looking than Composer. But let's go ahead and try another UI test by having them generate some buttons in Apple's new liquid ass design. This time, when we compare quality, there's a big difference. Claude definitely put forth the most effort with these nice animations, while the result from GPT-5 was embarrassingly bad. However, Cursor Composer did a surprisingly good job. At the very least, it seems like the Composer model has some potential. But another awesome feature is the new native browser. And this is an actual productivity game changer for me, because I constantly find the AI doing sloppy work on complex UI features. Now with the built-in browser, I can easily pinpoint the exact HTML element that sucks and add it directly to the chat. And we also get full Chrome DevTools support here to easily add that stuff to the chat as well. When it comes to Cursor, the only limit to your potential is not your imagination, it's how much money is in your bank account. But you shouldn't just slop out every new feature from scratch. And that's why you need to know about PostHog, the sponsor of today's video. It's an all-in-one suite of dev tools that's like a Swiss Army knife for building better products. It gives you product analytics, session replays, feature flags, and other tools to help your team understand how users actually interact with your app. It also comes with error tracking that's connected to all of your post hoc tools and user data, which gives you much greater context to debug issues faster and safely roll out fixes. The best part is that post hoc is super easy to implement, thanks to SDKs for web, mobile, and server-side apps. And they have a surprisingly generous, no card required free tier, which you can start mooching off of today using the link below. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.